Revelation chapter 13. And we're going to read all 18 verses. So once you found your place, we'll all stand for the reading of the Word of God. Revelation chapter 13. And the Word of God says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast. Rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth, by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Now again, Heavenly Father, I pray and ask for the help, the power, the guidance of your precious and dwelling Holy Spirit, Lord, that the words that I speak this morning, Lord, are right words, and Lord, are according to your purpose and your will. And we pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit, Lord, that indwells each and every believer here, Lord, uh, would confirm and make clear Lord, what is said this morning. And we pray in the name of and to the glory to the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You can be seated. This last Thursday, the sitting president of this country chose to vilify those Americans who have chosen not to take the COVID-19 vaccines based upon their personal reasons, exercising their free will and their rights according to the Constitution of this country and its Bill of Rights. 
Now, politics aside, okay, and those of you who know me, I am not political. Okay, as far as I'm concerned, they're all crooked. Yeah. I don't care yeah. which side it is, what they do. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm too old <laughs> to be fooled by their baloney. All right. The manner in which this man stated that he is going to go about to enforce the six-step policy that he laid out is exactly the manner in which dictators have forced their will over populations since all of mankind. Okay, the Bible is a history book. We can go into the Bible and see this type of mentality being done. And it is exactly how the Antichrist, when he comes, is going to push and enforce his will and his policies upon the people that remain here on the earth after the church is taken out. Praise God. We will be here for that. Demonizing his opposers. That's the first thing that he will do. He will pray the obedient. He will put mandates in place that are going to hinder and restrict the ability of his opposers to be able to live their life freely in this world. And he is going to tell the obedient that it is his mission and he is going to do absolutely everything he can within his power to protect them mm -hmm. from these evil, wicked opposers whose selfishness in demanding that they have individual rights uh, is placing their lives at risk. How many of you saw that this Thursday or watched it? I, I, I sat and watched the whole thing. It was not an easy thing to do. Uh, I'm one of those who yells at the television when you're going to hear me. Oh, I never yell at the television. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I throw stuff at it. Nice. But everything I just listed out for you here was exactly what came out of the mouth of the President of the United States of America, who is an elected official who is supposed to be working for and answerable to the American people. Now, mandates are going to come, and they're going to come quicker, and they're going to be more severe as people continue to oppose and resist these things. Uh, and they're going to do this until they have been subdued, <laughs> re-educated, or eliminated. Yeah. And that's history. If you're a student of history, as I've been all my life, uh, and I've read about it, but I have also lived through it and seen it. Now, the world is, at large, you know, the world in general, very swiftly putting in place many kinds of mandates and ordinances and laws that are based on this kind of mentality. You know, Australia, for yeah. example, is yeah, just, I, I mean, unbelievable. Talk about draconian. I mean, it's like everything is locked down. Yeah, we'll allow you one hour a day to come out of your house to exercise. <laughs> That's Australia? Yeah, I thought I saw clips of Australia where they weren't having any mask mandate. Oh, I don't know. Well, maybe out in the, in the outback in the bush or something like there, but you go to big cities, there and stuff, and they have the police, I mean, the COVID police, for a better term. You know, and I mean, let's face it, how, how is the president going to enforce 
the mandate he's put out there unless he has some sort of a enforcement you know one of the mandates he put out there is if, if you own a business and you employ a hundred or more people you are now going to be required to have all your employees take the vaccine or you are going to be fined and punished and persecuted by the government Where in the world does he think he has this kind of authority and power that he can do this? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's where that mentality comes from. See, they, they believe that individual rights are selfish and that they hinder the good of the whole. Well, the country is a republic and in a republic, the rights of the individual take precedent over the rights of the whole. Like it's how it's supposed to be. Okay? They want you to believe that government is wiser than any citizen, therefore they must be obeyed without question. And that there's no such thing as a sin or a wrongdoing in society except for those who will not conform and obey. Other than that, everything goes. I mean, that's why, honestly, why the, the, the Christians in uh, the first two centuries during the Roman Empire, before it became the ecclesiastical Rome, and then they did it for other reasons, persecuted Christians. Because in the Roman Empire, as long as you worshiped the emperor, you know, made your little offering, they didn't care what you did. You could do whatever you want. It was, it, everything went pretty much uh, which is pretty much how we are now you know uh, in this country now truth be told the world is looking for a savior yeah. okay they are looking for a messiah they are looking for a Christ just not the one in the Bible yeah Okay. Christ just simply means anointed. Okay. Uh, it's a title. Okay. What they want is the Christ that they have been fabricating in their hearts and minds for the last 2,000 years. Okay. Not the Jesus Christ of the scriptures. You know, like Jesus Christ Superstar. You know, uh, and all these other things. Uh, now, there are many, really, if we look at the term Messiah Christ as being anointed, there are many Christs in the Bible. You know, and for that matter, there's been many Christs throughout history. Saul, for example, is, is a good example here. Saul was anointed by God to be king of Israel. Not because Saul was God's choice. Saul was the people's choice. Remember, he told Samuel, look, they haven't rejected you. They rejected me when they demanded a king. We want a king like all the other nations. All right, so God said, okay. I'll give you what you want. <laughs> all right, be, be careful what you ask for. And Saul was anointed by Samuel. But that doesn't mean that he was God's choice. In fact, God allowed Saul to be king, but that didn't mean that he approved of him whatsoever. And of course, we read the story and we know uh, what happened with Saul. Pharaoh, Sennacherib, Nebuchadnezzar, Alexander the Great, the Caesars, Charlemagne, Napoleon, Genghis Khan, Attila the Hun, Ivan the Terrible, Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, Fidel Castro. They all were allowed by God. They were the people's choices. I mean, for that matter, every pope from Constantine down to Francis the talking mule 
okay, is a Christ. They are an anti-Christ. First John chapter 2, verse 18, the scripture says, Little children, it is the last time. Okay, this is 90 AD. <laughs> okay. It is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. In Psalm 75, verses 6 and 7, the scripture says, For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. Now we may or may not like who God allows to be in the positions of authority in the world. Whether it's local, state, national, other countries, okay. Ultimately, the one who decides this is God. Even Satan, who is currently at this time the prince of this world, is allowed to have that position and to have that power by God. Doesn't mean he approves of him doesn't mean he likes him or likes what he does but looking at the big picture if you will God's picture of thing it is serving his purpose to bring about the things that we've already been told in this book are going to happen I mean come on we know what Satan's end is uh, I mean, you know, they, 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 you know, the definition of his insanity is he doing the same thing, looking for a different outcome. Okay, Satan's been rebelling against God for, you know, at least 6,000 years, and then he, he's thrown in the pit for a 1,000 years, and they let him out, and he goes right back to rebelling again. Yeah. I mean, there's the definition of insanity right there. Sin is insanity. Now our text, Revelation chapter 13, illustrates for us this mentality very, very clearly. Uh, you know from verse 5 that it, it states that the Antichrist is given the power, power to continue for 42 months, three and a half years, okay? And it tells us that Satan is the one who gives him that power. Okay, remember when Jesus Christ was tempted by Satan in the wilderness. And at one point it says he took him up into a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And said, all of these have been given to me. And I'll give them to you if you'll bow down and worship me. And Christ is that, you know, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God in hell. Thou shalt He has that power. As the prince of this world, the leadership of every nation in this world, okay, is influenced in one way or another by the devil. Okay. So again, that's why you know, I'm going to tell you, I'm not political, okay? Mankind stinks as a whole, period. Yeah, I don't trust any of them. Because I'm a human being and I know. I know what I've been saved from. I know what I'm capable of as a human being. The Antichrist is the devil incarnate. In the same way that the true Christ and God incarnate. Why does God allow it? Why does God allow? Well, for one reason, just so we can take them down. I mean, remember Nebuchadnezzar? What happened to him? In his pride, even got warned about his pride. 
and still. And he spent seven years eating grass like a cow out in the field. He learned a hard lesson. Just as verse number six states that he is given power to make war with the saints and to overcome them. God allows it. God's going to allow that. That's nothing new. Read Fox's Book of Martyrs. <laughs> I mean, this is what's going on in Afghanistan. Okay? That's the devil. God's allowed. Why is God allowing it? Okay. He allows it because it is going to meet his purpose and his ends. He's allowed it in the past. He's allowed it now. And verse 6 tells us plain, he's going to allow it in the future. Okay. It accomplishes his ends. We don't think like God thinks. And if we would spend more time in the scriptures and in prayer, you know, we get a better grasp of how God thinks. Verse 8 tells us that all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So, unless born in tribulation, you're accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and you're working during the tribulation to keep your salvation. That's the case then. Uh, you know, everybody else is going to bow down and be obedient to and worshipful of the Antichrist and his government and his policies. Even a statue made unto him, not of him. And I've told you my opinions in the past, what that statue is actually going to be. It's going to be a giant Madonna. What it's going to be. You know, everybody except those who are not willing to bend, to compromise, to yield, to conform, uh, who are going to refuse to worship anyone but the true God. They get their heads whacked off. Yeah. They're going to hunt them down. They're going to persecute them. They are going to arrest them. And they are going to kill them. Okay. Verses 14 to 18. Okay, Make some points very clear about this. Everyone's going to be required to yield to and to obey the Antichrist and his administration. That's what we were just told Thursday. Part of which requires them to worship him and to take his mark. If they want to be able to live and function within society that he has established. Okay? Uh, without the mark of the beast and the number of his name. Okay, you cannot buy or sell. Okay? You can't sell anything, let's say if you're a farmer, you're a manufacturer, or something. Okay. you can't go down to the grocery store and get food you need, you can't get, uh, you know, gasoline for the car, you can't get, you know, you can't get formula for the baby, or, you can't do it. He's going to make your life impossible to live, so that the only way that you can possibly live is clandestinely, in a black market scenario. And they're going to be hunting for those people. And like I say, killing them. You know, and hunted down, apprehended, and summarily executed for their rebellion. So what does that mean to us though, here today? Okay. Go with me to Romans 13. It's interesting, it's another chapter 13. Devil's number. Romans 13, 1 through 8. 
what's the scripture tell us to do? Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation, judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore he must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience' sake. For this cause, I mean, for, for this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor, own no man anything, but to love one another, for he that loveth another has fulfilled the law. Let's keep going. We're not going to end there with that. First Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 13 through 17. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are set by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king, now, nothing's changed. Okay? God doesn't change. What it says in the Word of God has not changed. Past, present, future, all the same. We are expected to be law-abiding, to be respectful of authority, because all authority is ordained of God. But, and the big but that comes in there. If obeying that authority would cause you to go against the will of God, what he has plainly said and plainly ordained, okay, then we are to remain courteous, we are to remain respectful, and we are to respectfully decline to obey any of what said, we will not submit to those things. How do I know that? Moses with Pharaoh, Mordecai, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the apostles, Paul, and untold number of Christians over the last 2,000 plus years. Okay? God has given us, as I've said so many times before, one singular human right. Only one. And it's the right to choose your free will. When it's demanded that you surrender what God has freely given to you, then you must refuse. Obeying the Lord you know, it, it, we do it without question but obeying the Lord is going to have a price. Simple fact of it. Now I'm not telling anyone to not take the COVID vaccine. This really isn't about the COVID vaccine. I'm not telling anybody to not take it. I'm not telling anybody to take it. Okay? Exercise your for your will and, and you choose but you choose you don't let somebody force you to do it or not to do it okay, I, I'm, I'm not political okay I have my opinions about these things well but your free will is a gift given to you by God. 
Okay? And we're warned in the scriptures about those who would do such things as I've just described and talked about. We've got many examples all throughout the Bible, all the way down to the ultimate of that, which is the beast, the Antichrist, the unholy trinity, okay? Everything before that, they're all types of the Antichrist. Their policies are all the same as those that are going to be used